finance critic Peggy Nash here to uh, react to today's announcement. Uh, she's going to give a statement and then we'll do some questions afterwards. Okay, merci beaucoup. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you very much for, uh, for being here. I want to begin by saying that New Democrats are deeply disappointed with Minister Finlay's announcement today. Uh, what we're seeing from the Conservatives is a lack of vision around the economy and a lack of action around job creation. They presented a budget that failed to take any concrete steps towards creating jobs. And now they're introducing EI rules that further restrict who can get access to EI. They presented ever-changing stories about these changes with different ministers letting out sometimes very contradictory information. Uh, we heard uh, Minister Finley uh, just recently on May 15th saying, we haven't announced the details yet. We want to make sure the legislation gets through first, but it will be, su it'll be suitable or appropriate to the individual's qualifications and within their geographic area. Um, she also said regulations have to be developed after legislation is passed. Um, and then uh, we heard another conservative minister, Ashfield, say uh, people will no longer be able to turn down job opportunities within an hour's drive if they expect to collect benefits. It's not to force people to go to Alberta, uh, not to force people, you know, to drive for four hours or move away from their home community. That's not the intent. And then uh, later on, he said, uh, yet conservative officials later said the minister was speaking in generalities in an effort to make the point that EI recipients will not be expected to move. Let's remember with EI that only 40 percent of unemployed Canadians, less than 40 percent of unemployed Canadians, get access to EI benefits. Uh, that number is about 28 percent here in the province of Ontario. And in Canada, we have six unemployed workers for every job that's available. Unemployment insurance is insurance owned by the people that have paid into it. That's working people and employers, not the Conservative Party of Canada. As we saw briefly yesterday before the Prime Minister's office got a hold of him. Even Conservative MPs have concerns about this Trojan horse budget bill with its many hidden surprises. We keep discovering new things. The Minister is grabbing new powers through this bill to arbitrarily restrict EI further. She has announced some things today, but stay tuned. It could all change again in six months. She has the power to do that. What, what, what we heard today is the minister scapegoating unemployed Canadians, that they're not trying hard enough to find work. This is the same minister who has called EI lucrative. And now when it comes to changes, she's saying, just trust me. Well, Canadians don't trust conservatives. Une éducatrice en garderie de Salaberry de Valleyfield devrait accepter de, de travailler dans l'entrepôt de distribution de Shoppers Drug Mart de Cornwall, Ontario. An electrician from Saxon, New Brunswick, would have to apply to be the aquatic program manager for the city of Truro, Nova Scotia. Is that what we're going to see? The provinces are also raising serious concerns about these changes. They're concerned about this minister's decision not to consult with them before making changes. And to top it off, the Conservatives are trying to turn off the tap when it comes to the release of key information about unemployment. The Conservatives are again trying to starve the government of data, just as we saw with their elimination of the long-form census. Ce que le gouvernement nous apprend aujourd'hui, c'est qu'il va envoyer des courriels aux chômeurs. Il s'agit d'une annonce qui n'aide en rien les travailleurs. Ce n'est pas au gouvernement de jumeler les, les Canadiens the avec les emplois disponibles. Le gouvernement ne peut faciliter, pas forcer les gens à trouver un emploi. Et en ce qui concerne la définition d'emploi convenable, cette définition n'éclaircit en rien la confusion causée par les multiples sorties improvisées des ministres conservateurs qui n'arrêtent pas de se contredire. 
La réalité, c'est que les conservateurs vont restreindre un peu plus l'accès au système. Rappelons que moins de 40 des gens ont accès à l'assurance-emploi. La définition d'un travail similaire peut vouloir dire changer d'industrie, ce qui n'augure rien de bon. Et la ministre dit que les règles veulent que les travailleurs doivent chercher un emploi, sauf que c'est déjà la règle. C'est la loi actuelle. On dirait que l'annonce a été préparée en vitesse pour, la pour que la confusion cesse dans les rangs conservateurs, sauf que pour les travailleurs, la confusion est encore plus grand. Still a lot of so, uh, with that, I'll, I'll just open it up for questions. Thank you. Yeah, we'll start off with uh, Duvan Duzin of CBC. <coughs> the way that uh, Diane Finley described it is that she wants to match skills with openness. So what could be so wrong with that? Well, under the law currently, uh, people are required to look for work in order to get benefits. That is the law. And the fact that less than 40 percent of Canadians actually get benefits, uh, it would seem that they're probably applying the law to match people with their skills. Um, there's no legislative change needed to do what the minister's describing. But what's the boogeyman in this legislation as you see it? Because it's very, uh, I mean, the changes here are very complicated and affect a lot of uh, segments of the workforce. What's the overriding theme here? What is it you're most concerned about? This Trojan horse budget bill, which this piece has nothing to do with the budget. Uh, what this bill does is it gives the power to the minister to make subsequent changes. There is a definition today of suitable employment in the, employment, in the um, Unemployment Insurance Act. But this bill would give the minister the power to say this today, but then in six months have something completely different as to what constitutes suitable employment. She's saying, just trust us. And I don't think Canadians trust this government because there has been a lack of transparency and accountability, and we've seen it far too many times. There is so much hidden in this budget bill um, that we keep discovering and has nothing to do with the budget. Um, and, and I think that piece of it is very troubling. We should open it up and let's have, let's have discussions with the people who will be uh, directly affected by these changes. I think they should be involved. That's really angle of Global National. Um, the officials in the department said that less than 1 percent of EI claimants will be cut off. So given that, you know, whatever that number is, 5,000 or whatever, um, what's wrong with this and, and what would the NDP propose in terms of EI changes? Because there is a, there are a lot of people that say EI changes are needed, that there are abuses of the system. And if we're only really talking about 1 percent, what's wrong with, with making it tougher for them to collect EI? Let me tell you what's an abuse of the system. An insurance plan that everyone's obliged to pay into, and in Ontario, for example, only 28 percent of unemployed people can get access to it. That seems to me pretty abusive. And under what we hear from the minister today, uh, she talks about seasonal work, but, but let's remember there are a growing number of Canadians who also do contract work who work on contracts, who have uh, the work has, is more precarious than it used to be. And um, these people, I presume, will also be affected by these changes. So I, I think the real problem is people are paying into an insurance plan for which they're not getting benefits. Well, what would the NDP propose as an alternative? Because under this plan, the minister says, look, EI is only 55 percent of your salary anyway, and we're not asking anyone to accept a job that's less than 70 percent of their previous salary. Mm -hmm. So they'd be better off taking the job than they would be staying on EI. I don't think people are stupid. I think most people, if they have a job that is in uh, their, their field, in their skill set, and it makes them better off financially, and they can take that job, they will do it. And I think it's, it's the implication is that people are lazy and don't want to work. And I, I think that's, very, that's a very unfair message for this minister to be sending. You know, why aren't we talking about the $13 billion this year in corporate tax cuts without strings to create jobs? Why aren't we putting a little pressure on, on employers to create more, more jobs in Canada so that 
we can reduce the unemployment level. So what would the NDP propose uh, to, if anything, to change the EI system? Do you have any ideas on that, or are you just happy with the system the way it is? No, obviously I've just described a number of problems with it. I think that we need to recognize the changing nature of work and recognize that work is more precarious. People do work on contract, seasonal, part-time work, and uh, recognize the difficulties that people have uh, if they are unemployed in getting access to, to EI benefits. I'm going to Louise Elliott of CBC. Um, Peggy, just in terms of the, the minister and the department saying that they're not really adding a whole lot of extra resources to uh, administer or enforce this new set of rules, um, do you think that's realistic? I mean, we've seen lots of stories about people having very much trouble getting access to EI because of backlogs at, at uh, Service Canada. Uh, what's your understanding? What is your what is your assessment of this situation vis-a-vis -vis added resources? Well, you know, part of the big problem today for unemployed workers is that they never get to talk to a person. They can be uh, a couple of hours on hold, playing uh, telephone uh, message hell, and they they don't get to talk to a person. And that's why there are so many appeals. Claims are denied. People appeal it. And so many people are actually awarded their benefits on appeal because if they could have just spoken to a person, then it would have been, they, people would have realized their claim was legitimate. They would have solved the problem. So cutting back even further uh, over the next three years, there will be about 29,000 more um, uh, jobs lost in the public sector, how many of these services will be cut back even further? I will go to Jason Fiquette of Post Media. Thanks, Peggy. Uh, just a question. We just kind of asked a bit of what I was curious about. The other thing was, you keep on mentioning like less than 40% of Canadians are actually getting benefits. What is that based on? And is, are you suggesting then that it's too stringent of uh, number of hours that are needed to qualify for EI? Like, I just want to put some context around what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Because the government doesn't seem to suggest that less than 40% of people are getting EI benefits. So what, what's, what, how, where do you get that from and how do you change it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's StatsCan numbers, which we are, some numbers we're still able to get from StatsCan. And um, it's based on the unemployment statistics, the official unemployment statistics, and the number of EI uh, claims that are accepted. And part of the problem that you have identified is the hours system, which varies from province to province and region to region. And it uh, doesn't capture the changing nature of work where um, many people are on contract or their hours are um, irregular. And um, uh, so, so that, that also causes many people to fall through the cracks. We'll go to uh, Roger Smith of CTV. Uh, Ms. Nash, you know, for years we've heard complaints about welfare bums and people on pogi uh, spending the winter skiing at Whistler. <coughs> How much of this do you think is ideological? And what is the target? What I hear from this government is a message to uh, demonize people who, through no fault of their own, are unemployed. And uh, I think the announcement today is, is uh, an attempt at damage control because the communications, the spin cycle is kind of, uh, has kind of, has gone off the rails and they're trying to reassure people that what they're proposing is very reasonable. If it's so reasonable, separate this part of their Trojan horse budget bill put it into the Human Resources and Skills Development uh, Committee. Let's have a good examination of this. Let's hear from the people who not only pay into the fund, but will be directly affected by these changes to make sure that these are the, the changes that Canadians need and will help connect Canadians with, with jobs. Um, the uh, officials said that they expected maybe 1% of people would cut off benefits, but obviously the government is also saving money. If people are forced to work, then they're not paying them as much in EI, or not as much as going out in EI. Given that this whole budget is about cutting costs in the deficit, what do you make of the inability of the government to come up with 
a figure, even a ballpark figure, of what these measures might save? Well, as you know, it's been very difficult for us to get figures. We were pushing hard on the changes to OAS and finally got a figure on a Friday afternoon before a long weekend. Um, so uh, we, we don't know. But again, let's, let's be clear that, the, um, that this is a fund that working people and employers pay into. And yes, of course, they want it to be well run and they want it to be used for the uh, intended purpose. Um, but uh, I think what's happening here is that people are being scapegoated, that if they can't find a job at a period of elevated unemployment, somehow it's, it's entirely their fault. I don't see anything in this uh, Budget Implementation Act that would help people with retraining, to help them develop new skills, um, help them have a, a step up in a changing economy. And I don't see anything that, um, that, that reaches the employers who've gotten incredible tax breaks, billions of dollars in tax breaks, to say to them, okay, folks, you're sitting on half a trillion dollars of cash here. Let's, let's create some jobs and get the economy going. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Bruce Campion, the Toronto Star. Ms. Hush, just very what you think of the the effort by Ms. Finley now to tie the temporary foreign workers program to the employment changes, and what will be the ramifications for unemployed Canadians on that? Well, just remember the, the changes, again, that are buried in this Trojan horse bill, uh, which is that instead of having, I think it's three months currently, um, to see if there are Canadians available for jobs before bringing in temporary foreign workers, uh, the, the, it's a longer period. That's going to be reduced to two weeks, and temporary foreign workers can now be paid 15 percent less than the going wage. Um, so that will already exert downward pressure on wages. Um, I, I, what, I, what I glean from the minister's comments today is that the EI changes will also exert downward pressure on people's wages. We'll, we'll just have to see how uh, what what she actually means, but uh, I think there there will be downward pressure on people's wages at a time when costs are rising and inequality is rising. I don't think that's healthy for our economy. Do you think Canadians, unemployed Canadians, could be forced into jobs that perhaps they might not otherwise accept? And I guess should they? You know, sh you know, should they, is that a time when they should be allowed to be choosy mm -hmm. about their work? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I'm not sure we have clarity today on exactly what the minister is proposing. Uh, so I, I think if, if uh, for people who are actively looking for work, and uh, I was in Montreal last night and, and uh, uh, heard some very poignant testimony from uh, young people who, of course, have doubled the unemployment rate of, of other Canadians, uh, people who were in a lot of distress because they were unsuccessful in finding work. So what is the message to them? I think there's still confusion but apprehension as well. Uh, you, a question was asked about ideology. Do you think that the government is trying to help people overcome obstacles? The, the, this was being portrayed as being a systemic problem. You mentioned some scenarios that occurred in the past. You said that there were unemployed that were being targeted. Do you think that this initiative today would lead greater to credence to the fact that there there is abuse of the system that people are abusing the system. Est il y a des abus du système. Abuses il y a des of the system. There are some people who prefer to remain on employment uh, re uh, and les receive the uh, benefits. Mais je dirais but que I would say to that la, but the abuse of the system derives from a situation where more than 60% of people without work the unemployed uh, non pas accès, don't even have uh, aux prestations. access to benefits. Uh, ça, ça, problem, uh, That's a problem, major. a major problem. Uh, I would also les, say 
les travailleurs, les employés préfèrent toujours avoir un emploi et cherchent avoir des emplois et euh, si, si, si et, 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 c'est pas clair quel 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 serait l'impact de ces changements et c'est pourquoi on essaie de diviser le, ce, ce projet de loi euh, Cheval de Trois like euh, pour étudier bien um, l'impact de ces changements out, et like d'avoir le témoignage de ceux qui, qui non seulement payent euh, pour l'assurance emploi mais qui, qui, qui vont être touchés directement those who are going par les changements. To be hit by these changes. Leur voix. We have to hear their voices. Fanny Olivier. 